Please understand what you're looking at here. I have not welded before in my life. I literally went out and bought an aluminum TIG welder and then watched a bunch of videos on YouTube, practiced for about 30 minutes, and welded this. So be nice. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Those of you who have been around the channel for a while know that I have been using a single nozzle Noga Mini Cool to apply coolant and clear chips at the mill. And that's actually worked pretty well for me, but there are situations where the single nozzle just isn't enough. Like when I'm cutting a deep pocket or slotting or sometimes when I have to mill all the way around the perimeter of a part, I end up in a situation where the air and coolant are blocked from getting to the tool during part of the cut. And that has caused some problems and a couple of broken tools if we're being honest. So I picked up a dual nozzle fog buster and today we're gonna make some flexible mounts and get it installed on the mill. This is the fog buster system and this is the canister that holds the coolant. I'm gonna be running soluble oil. Now this is a little bit different from the Noga Mini Cool that I've been running that just uses the Venturi effect to draw fluid out of the cylinder. In this case, this is actually pressurized. You set the pressure here and it, that controls both the air pressure going to the nozzle and the pressure in the cylinder that forces fluid up the fluid nozzle. The idea being that you don't have to have such a high velocity venturi to pull the fluid out so it doesn't get atomized as much. Now to mount this onto the mill, uh, they sell a bracket, looks exactly like this one. This is actually one that I made. Uh, if you saw my previous video on making and bending sheet metal parts in Fusion 360, I used exactly the same technique here, just super glued this down to a plate, milled it out with the CNC mill, and then bent it to shape. And I did that just because, I mean, they're like 12 bucks, you can buy them, but you have to place a separate order and I neglected to get one initially, so I just went ahead and made one. So this will go on the side of the mill, and then it has two nozzles. And the nozzles are, uh, have a valve in them, so you have air pressure that comes in, and you have pressurized fluid that comes in, and then you can control how much, with this knob, you control how much fluid is added, and then it all comes out the small orifice here on the end and uh, pointed at your work, and it should evacuate chips and lubricate the cut. Now, to mount it, they have these flexible clamping uh, uh, brass pieces on the side, and it comes with a magnetic base. So this is a magnet, you can stick it on your mill or stick it on the table. Uh, and then this clamps with a nylon tip screw into the, uh, the little fixture here on the side and you can point it in whatever direction, you know, hang it on the side of your mill and point it back in towards the nozzle or put it on the table or any surface that's handy depending on what kind of tool you wanna use it on. Now, these magnetic bases aren't gonna work very well on my mill because I don't have any flat uh, ferromagnetic surfaces. The, I've used aluminum for the mount, and the only steel on the bottom of the spindle is the round bearing housing, so these aren't gonna work for me. I need to come up with something else. So what I've decided to use is lock line, and this is commonly used for flood coolant systems. It's just a flexible, segmented plastic line that will, you can bend it into position and it will stay where you put it. And this is the half inch variant. Um, I bought this from Amazon. Comes in a little bag with a couple of segments. I will put a link to this down in the video description if you're interested in building your own. Destroy the packaging here. Now, I'm not gonna use any of the fittings. It just comes with two six inch segments of line and these snap together. They're a little bit difficult to get together, so they sell a tool for doing this and you can just snap the two pieces in and line them up and connect them like that. So this tool is also available on Amazon. I'll put a link to that down in the description. And so the idea is I would like to use this um, not just as a flexible mount to position it, I also wanna run the lines through it so we get a nice clean installation. 
Now I already have a section of lock line over the hose on one of the nozzles and I just ran the lines through it, had to disconnect them, and disconnecting the hoses at the nozzle turns out to be the hardest part of this entire project. Uh, they really hold on these barb fittings, and so I ended up having to actually slit the end of the line with an X-Acto knife back about a quarter of an inch just to get it to release off of the barb, and then I just cut the lines and pressed them back on with a nice clean end, took off about a quarter of an inch. So the half inch lock line is just about the right size to pass the two lines for the fog buster. So I've got that through. And the last thing that I need then, of course, is just a way to attach this firmly to the end of the lock line. Now I've looked around on the internet and I've seen several people, including John Saunders, have, these, uh, have setups very similar to this on their CNC mills. And while I could find several people that showed, you know, a photo of their setup or some text description, I couldn't find anyone who really had the details and really provided all the models that were necessary. At least I didn't find them if they're out there. I did find something on GrabCAD that was more or less suitable for this end, but I didn't find anything for clamping the other end securely to the mill to mount it. So let's go into the computer and design something. Now the fog buster mounts are a thing that already exists. Let's uh, go see if we can find a model to start from. Go out here to GrabCAD and just search for fog buster. And there is uh, something here by uh, BRBRB called the fog buster housing. And we'll go in and download the files here. And we have in here a step file. Let me go ahead and extract these. And we have our step. Now let's upload this into Fusion 360. So upload, drag the file in here, click upload. And here is the model. And because I uploaded this as a step file, we actually have solid geometry. We have a component with two bodies. Now uh, this, I have already printed it and I've already played with it a little bit and discovered that whether there was a change to the fog buster or an error in this model, these openings here for the knob are in the wrong place and they need to be moved by about a millimeter and a half. Fortunately, that is really easy to do. Just right click on this surface say press pull, and in this case we'll say minus 1.5 millimeters, and we can do exactly the same thing on the other side. Press pull, 1.5, and presto, we have now moved that hole. So all we have to do is do the same thing on the other side here and print it out. Now we just need to design a block to attach the other end of the lock line to the mill itself. Now I've searched around a little bit on GrabCAD and I didn't really find anything that worked for me. So what I wanna do is actually design this from scratch. So let's start a new design and let's start with a sketch and let's start with a rectangle. And let's make this, I know my holes are gonna be on one inch spacing. So let's make this 1.5 inches by one inch. Let me switch my document over here to, oh, it's already in inches. Okay, so we're good. Okay, and then let's uh, hit L for line, X for construction. Tip I picked up from the comments on a previous video. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to put another construction line across this way. I'll just make sure that's perpendicular. And I know I wanna space this off the backside by 3 eighths of an inch. Let's put it on a circle. X again to turn off construction. And let's mirror that circle around the center line. That'll make sure that they are centered and distance between those. We know it's one inch because we designed the mounts on the spindle. And then the size of these holes is gonna be a number 10 screw. So I want 196 thou. Okay, now select that region, right click extrude inch and a quarter, 
and now we have a block that we can bolt down and we'll eventually split this in half and so they can clamp down on the lock line. The next thing we need to do here though is create the cavity for the end of the lock line hose to fit into. And the geometry there is pretty complex, so let's go get a model for the lock line and start with that. So if I just go to Google and search for lock line CAD, first hit here, Lockwood Products, they actually publish CAD files. And we want step files. Now they have, if you notice, there's a notice, these are the sole property of Lockwood Products. So you are not supposed to download these and try to make your own lock line. By the way, if you've got a really good 3D printer, I guess you could, good luck. Uh, we're just gonna use this as a tool to design something that works with lock line, which is exactly what they intended. So we'll go here to standard parts. Uh, we want the one half system and the naming here is pretty complex, but if you come down here, there's a whole bunch of numbers here and it says one half element dot step. So that's what we want is the one half inch line element. Download that. Then back to fusion here, upload. Let's grab that file, drop it in here and upload. So that's being uploaded and then it'll be processed server side and that takes a moment. Okay, and let's see what we've got. Okay, so this is the uh, lock line element part and uh, this is what I wanna use as a tool to cut out the cavity. But I don't wanna just cut it out and leave a slug of material in the middle here. I need to make this solid so that I can use it to cut. And there's lots of ways to do that. Um, if you know of a really quick and easy way to just fill the center of this and make it solid, uh, please put that down in the comments. I couldn't find a good way, so I decided to do it with the Surface Workspace. So let me just save a copy of this first. And we'll work on this copy. So we'll pop over here to Surface and we will just select individual surfaces here on the inside and delete them. Now what that gives us is just the outside surface that's left and no geometry on the inside. So now I'll go here to patch and I will select a select this circle on this edge and that will create a patch that covers that end and then over on this side I will create a patch to cover the other end and now we should have a watertight body and so now I should be able to say stitch select all of that okay and now we have a solid uh, watertight body. And now if we go back here to, let's check, take a look and make sure that's really solid. Section analysis. And you can see the center of that has the cross hatches, so that actually is a solid body. Okay, so now if we go back over to, excuse me, go back over to our solid workspace, we now have a tool. Let's save that. And switch back over here to our mount block. We have to save that before we can bring anything in. And let's bring in our lock line tool. Okay, we've just imported that. Now we need to position it. This is the wide end, which is the end of the hose. That's the part we want submerged into the block. So we'll hit J for join. Put a joint, use that joint on the end there and the joint location in the center here. Want to flip it the other direction and now we can position this where we want it inside the block. And I can look down from the top and make sure I'm not intersecting the holes. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, let's try 0 0.45. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and make that 0.5. 
to make sure we don't intersect those holes. And let's use this with the combine to actually cut this out. So we'll select the combine tool. We'll choose the target body. And then we'll choose this as the tool body. And the operation that we want is to cut. And we won't worry about new component. Just click OK. Now we can hide this tool. And we now have a body that has a cutout in it. And I'll go ahead and uh, we need to go ahead and put a hole through this. So let's make a hole. We'll just create the hole, use the hole tool, put this in the center, set a diameter to half an inch, since that's the inside diameter of this, um, of this uh, lock line. And I'll go ahead and punch that all the way through, should be fine. And now we have a hole and a cavity for the end of the lock line hose to fit into. And let's go ahead and put some fillets on this thing. Hit F for fillet. And I just want to clean up these edges. 100 thou looks fine. Now let's make sure, um, use a section analysis tool. Let's just make sure that we've got what we think we have. Yep, so we have a pocket here to hold the end of the lock line and nice smooth transitions with a hole through the block. It doesn't intersect the mounting holes, so that should be good. Now let's cut it in half, construct mid plane, select these two sides. That gives us a plane down the center. And then let's split the body. This is the body to split. Splitting tool is that plane. Okay, and now we have two bodies. Hide the construction, and so now um, I can hide the top half, and we have the bottom half here of the of the clamp block, and that should exactly fit with zero clearance. Now I don't want to, uh, you know, if we fit the lock line here, you can see how that's going to fit around the end of the lock line part. Now. Normally, if you have parts that need to fit, you want some kind of an offset here so that you have a little bit of space, but I actually want this to clamp securely. So I am going to leave zero clearance. Now, if that doesn't clamp securely enough, I can take this block and run these two surfaces on sandpaper and it'll slightly shorten it and it will tighten that fit. So the only thing we have left to do now is I wanna put some uh, radii on this thing to make it a little bit nicer, F for fill it. Probably should have done this before I split it. Come around here. Round over those corners nicely. And then uh, to make this easier to print, since this top surface and bottom surface are going to be against the bed of the printer, then I will come in here and just add chamfers around the top and bottom. Something like that. And now we have these two parts. We can just send those to the 3D printer. It turns out they're actually identical, but we can send those to the 3D printer, print it out, and we should have a clamp block that will allow us to anchor the lock line to the side of the mill spindle mount. Here are the 3D printed parts, and they uh, turned out pretty well. I've been playing with these a little bit just to see how they fit. And when they came directly off of the printer, they were a little bit loose. So you can see this fits nice and neat into the little pocket we created. And this fits over the top. And again, they were just a tiny bit too uh, loose when it came out. This twisted easily, so if you have this bent at an angle, it would very easily rotate. And I wanted a little bit better clamping action. So I just grabbed a piece of sandpaper. This is uh, 320 grit, wet and dry. And you just take this surface of the part and just rub it on the sandpaper, take a little bit of material off, and that will allow the part then to close more tightly together and get a better grip on the hose. So after a little bit of finessing, the parts fit nicely on here. And when you clamp it down, I played around clamping it in the vise to close it and it gets a really nice grip on here. You can see that if I pinch one side closed, the other side has a small gap, and so when you uh, clamp a screw down on that, it clamps securely onto the hose. Then the other end is uh, these parts that fit onto the nozzle, and the nozzle, you have to, we have to remove this first. Let me find 
right driver, take out the little set screw here, or at least loosen it, and that part just pulls out. And then I'll run this back in flush. And then these parts just clamp on either side. Now this, uh, you can see there are some holes in this for screws. And one side has large holes to pass the screws cleanly. These are for 440 hardware. The other side has uh, holes that in the model are actually threaded 440. And uh, you can just force the screws in. I took a 440 tap and just went ahead and ran it through the holes to clean up the threads and make sure that we knew what we were dealing with. And so it's relatively easily to, easy to just, uh, let me grab this one that's actually got the nozzle in it. It's relatively easy to just take these parts and slide everything into position and just assemble it. Uh, I've got some 440 screws here someplace. And we'll just run those in. And there we have it. Um, I did the same sandpaper trick to finesse these parts together to make sure I was getting a good grip on the end here and on the last segment of the lock line. And so that you could press it into position, it would stay. And that seems to be fitting pretty well. Again, if it's not tight enough, just hit it with the sandpaper a little bit. I have seen other people who shimmed it, but since it's just a plastic part and sandpaper's cheap, there's no real reason to do that. So we can still get at the knob here to adjust the fluid. And then these pieces will just clamp on the other end easily when we get this over to the mill to mount it. So I think we should go over to the mill and mount it. I'll go ahead and assemble this other nozzle off camera. You don't need to watch me fiddle with a knife trying to get these hoses off. Like I said, that's by far the most difficult part. Now to actually mount the canister on the mill, um, I need to have a couple of hard points where I can mount this bracket on the outside of the enclosure. And I don't have that because the enclosure is actually made from coroplast. So I welded up a bracket, and this is just a couple of long pieces of one inch aluminum angle, uh, eighth of an inch thick. And uh, this is actually a welding practice coupon on the end to make a top bracket so I can put a couple screws into the top rail of the enclosure. And then the other end just has another piece of aluminum angle welded on so I can screw this into the side of the wooden base. And so please understand what you're looking at here. I have not welded before in my life. I literally went out and bought an aluminum TIG welder and then watched a bunch of videos on YouTube practiced for about 30 minutes and welded this. So be nice. Okay, I have the fog buster canister in here just mounted temporarily in the mill and uh, I just have the bracket here. You can see just clamped to the top rail. Uh, this is not probably gonna end up mounted on the inside. This is gonna be on the outside of the mill, but at about this height, probably just around on the back. And you can see that I have the canister height right about the same height as where the nozzles are going to be when it's, uh, when it's running. Specifically, I have it slightly below where the nozzles are going to be, so hopefully when it's switched off, we won't end up with uh, coolant just siphoning out and running onto the, uh, onto the mill when it's not running. So I think this is what the uh, manufacturer recommends, and we've got lots of rail here so we can very easily adjust it later if we need to. So let's mount the uh, nozzles, which I've got right here, onto the side of the mill. And you'll recall that when I made this mount, I put extra screws in the side here. These are just 1032 screws, and those are just set screws in there, and I've got those on both sides. So we should be able to just take those out and mount the nozzles. And I'll snug these down nice and tight so that I get a good clamp and it'll actually flex the part here. This is printed in uh, PETG or PETG, depending how pedantic you want to be. 
and that gives me a nice clamp and I can position that where I want it. Let me do the other one. Okay, so if we've got short tools in there, we should be able to reach up and blow right near the spindle and we can reach down and blow much uh, deeper into the cut if we've got a longer tool in here. I think that's gonna work great. Come around the front if we wanted to blow aluminum snow out onto the floor. I wasn't quite sure exactly how well these were gonna work, how well they were gonna position, but I think those are gonna work great. This is the one I've played with a little bit, and so it's a little less squeaky than this one that's brand new right out of the package, but I can get at my cut from both sides. One of the problems that I've had is when I'm cutting, especially if I'm slotting and going around, there's always an angle where the air just couldn't quite get to it with one nozzle, and so I'm really hopeful that with two nozzles, I'll be able to blast from multiple directions and should be able to uh, get into any kind of hole that might exist. I can come up at a really high angle here and bring that in steep or I can bring it down low across the part. Can even turn it around and come in very high down parallel to the tool. So I don't think if I can't get the uh, chips out of the holes now, then uh, it's not because of the coolant system. Well, that's it for today. If you want to make one of these for your mill, uh, the parts will be on Thingiverse, and I will put a link down in the video description, both for the halves of the clamp block and for the uh, housing for the fog buster nozzle, so you can download those and 3D print them yourself. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.